Hello everyone, welcome to my 1cc guide and commentary for Metal Slug 3, where I not only show off my 1cc replay, which I got yesterday, but I also give advice and guidance on how you can get your own clear of this game, because when it comes to Metal Slug and when it comes to arcade games generally, it's not just about lightning fast reflexes, it's not just all about, oh my god, he can dodge raindrops and all that. It's actually mostly about having a really solid route and game plan and becoming very consistent with what the game is doing when it's doing it. And that really is what's going to get you over the finish line more than just having reactive skills, especially in Metal Slug, because this is a very routing heavy game and series. That all being said, though, Metal Slug is incredibly fun. I've actually already got a 1cc of Metal Slug 1. I've got a 1cc of Metal Slug 2, and I have commentary for them. But Metal Slug 3 has always been kind of the white whale or kind of like the, oh my god, so I actually have to 1cc this one next, uh, kind of halting my progress for a bit there. And the reason for that is when I first played Metal Slug 3, I had a bit of a hot take on Metal Slug 3 because whenever you talk to people about this series, Metal Slug 3 is almost always pointed out as the peak of the series, the best game in the series. I think, I'm assuming if there's Metal Slug tier lists out there, Metal Slug 3 is probably the highest one or in the high tier. But up until doing this 1cc fully, my initial impressions for the game were actually a little bit less favorable compared to its peers. I said, oh, you know, Metal Slug 1 is really, really good and probably my favorite, followed by Metal Slug 2. And then I think, oh, Metal Slug 3, it's very ambitious. It's doing a lot, but maybe it's doing a little bit too much. <laughs> And so I felt like Metal Slug 3 was a little bit too bloated. And that was always my sort of thoughts on the game prior to doing this 1cc. And the reason for that is many years ago, many moons ago, a friend of mine came over, a total casual player. He doesn't play arcade games or Metal Slug all that often. And we sat down and we were going through and we played Metal Slug 3. And it felt like that clear took two hours or something like that. It just felt like it went on and on and on and the game just never ended. And so I was very nervous about that coming into this replay. But it turns out that that initial impression of mine, it's one of the few times where an arcade game has felt bloated to me, but then playing it more and getting more used to it, it's actually felt like, okay, it's not nearly as bloated as I thought and then actually it's doing a lot of really cool stuff. So we'll see as I make my way through this series what my final thoughts on Metal Slug 3, but I would say it is among my favorites so far because of how much it is doing and how awesome it is. But let's get to the replay here. So we're coming to the first point of the run that you need to pay attention to something with, which is these red cop choppers and its buddies. So the thing about it is when that red chopper first flies in, I know you're tempted to just blow the crap out of it with the chaser right away. I've done that a thousand times. But for whatever reason, when that red chopper first spawns on screen, when it's like really right on the side of the screen during its initial flying animation and everything, if you kill it during that, if you speed kill it too fast, it won't do the chain reaction and kill the other uh, choppers so you need to let it fly a little bit to the left before you speed kill it Sometimes you may even have it loop around a little bit just to be safe because if you kill it too quick You won't uh, get the chain reaction and you really want that because you need those chasers to get the uh, flamethrower flamethrower to drop and then you can use the flamethrower to clear everything out So let's talk a little bit about weapons in Metal Slug 3 because they are very very important to your route and to your run and in fact, that is primarily what you're routing when I say you need to come up with a route Metal Slug 3. Basically, in Metal Slug games, routing is where do you stand, where do you crouch, where do you jump, and what weapon do you use, and your bomb, and when you use your bombs, when you save up your bombs. So, for example, this first boss here, this zombie boss, when you first play the game uninitiated, this boss is going to absolutely destroy you. It's going to annihilate you. And the reason why is because... If you don't have all these ridiculous uh, weapons stockpiled for the boss, uh, it gets really, really nasty in the later phases. So the way it works is you get that rocket launcher all the way back earlier uh, when you kill that uh, little plane thing. It drops a rocket launcher. And initially you're thinking, oh, okay, I'll just use the rocket launcher on the zombies and everything. Don't do that. Instead, do what I did where you run and you just jump over all the zombies 
because you're going to want that full rocket launcher. Also, as you notice throughout the stage, I went ahead and collected a lot of grenades, but notice I didn't use many grenades. That's because you want to save up as many grenades as possible as well. And so the way the alien phase works to make it really consistent and safe is you just stand underneath it on kind of the left side and unload on it with your rocket launcher. And then when your rocket launcher runs out, you kind of wait for it to go into the next phase where it spins. Then you just stand and you mash the crap or auto fire grenades into it until you just blow them all up and speed kill them. You want to speed kill. That's the key. And to do the speed kill, you need rocket launchers and grenades. So here we go into stage three. And I was really surprised how many shmup-like areas there are in Metal Slug 3. This game is like 30%, 25% shmup, which is pretty nuts. Uh, but not always full-on uh, auto-scrolling. It, it's pretty interesting the way it works. Like, Metal Slug uh, shmup sections, there are some auto-scrolling ones. In stage 4 and Stage 5, you get the auto-scrolling ones. But like this one here is like this kind of weird screen lock thing it's almost like devil may cry or something where it's not actually scrolling by itself when you're fighting the enemies instead it kind of like scrolls you into a screen and then locks the screen and then you clear the enemies out of the screen and then it scrolls you to the next screen like devil may cry basically uh it's pretty interesting uh, but uh a little bit different than a traditional shmup as far as you're not actually being pushed forward during the combat usually but when it comes to the submarine, I, this is one of my favorite sections of the game, that sub. Because you can just, uh, the name of the game is just launching torpedoes in their faces. Uh, you have massive hitboxes on all your ships, by the way. So, like, even though the enemy patterns are really wide, they're still a little bit tricky to dodge just because your hitboxes are so freaking huge. It gives the game a real nice chunky feel, though. It, it works for Metal Slug, especially because it has kind of a little health system and everything with the gas. So, uh, this section here, the way it works is the uh, little laser guys can screw you up when you first st get going because you have to kill them by shooting them in the eye and they're invulnerable from behind. And so what can happen, what you don't want to happen is you don't want them to overlap. So you don't want one of the laser guys to be looking right and then another guy, one to be looking at you and then you try to shoot at them and the one looking the other direction is like blocking the bullets. That, that's what can happen. It's really nasty. Uh, so make sure you can kind of jump over them and shoot down on them. That's usually a good strap. And then the, this section here, this is like a classic Metal Slug trap section. So the way it works is the first bit, they come down on the floor. And it's all about speed killing them. You want to speed kill them on the right. And then it lifts the camera. And then you get these enemies to who uh, run in from the top. If you can, you want to also speed kill them from the right. But it's a little tricky. The thing about them, though, is that they're what I call jump traps. So the guys up top with the bazookas, they're jump traps, which means if you jump, they will snipe your ass. So even though it's so tempting to jump, because in this game, jumping gives you acceleration. You actually move faster if you jump. But jumps in this game are not Super Mario Bros. or Mega Man. They're Castlevania. They're high commitment moves. So if you can avoid jumping unnecessarily, you always should avoid jumping, especially because crouching in this game is really, really good. The reason why crouching is really good, as you'll see here soon, here I go, is it ducks under a lot of bullet patterns, like a lot of them. And then on top of that, uh, there's really no neg negative to it other than you can't move around that much. But there's just so many uh, sections of the game where crouching and shooting is just really good. <laughs> it's a really good way to go. Uh, so this bit here. What I recommend for this bit here is it's all about tactical spawns, what I call slow walking, which means you don't just run forward and shoot, right? Um, some sections, Metal Slug's funny. Routing Metal Slug is really funny because some sections we'll see in the next stage, the, the best way to do them is just run forward and just throw bombs and shoot full speed. And then other sections, it's best to do what I call slow walking, as you saw there, where you kind of walk forward a bit, you strategically spawn some enemies, and then you take them out, walk forward, strategically spawn, rinse and repeat. Uh, this boss here, and this is one of my favorite Metal Slug bosses. Again, when I first started playing the game, I was like, dear God, I hate this boss. This was one of my least favorites. And the reason for that is because I was not routing weapons properly. 
the the difference between Metal Slug Three and Metal Slug One, for example, is Metal Slug One you don't really need to route weapons all that often. They're all kind of just where you need them to be most of the time. Metal Slug Three, the developers play with this a lot more, where they give you a shotgun like six screens back, and you want to save that shotgun, and so then you can use like the wet the bombs and the slugs and stuff to avoid using the weapon to the boss. That happens in almost every single boss fight. Uh, we saw with the rocket launcher. Uh, and then we saw that with the shotgun, and we're going to see it with the shotgun or laser in this stage as well. Uh, and the flamethrower in the final stage. It's just the, the way to do it in this game. Um, so this camel section here, this is a great a little trick. I definitely want to show off. So this, sec this screen here is really, really hard if you don't route it properly. But if you route it properly, it's not bad at all. And the way it works is you park the camel, you jump off the camel, and you fire those uh, rocket launchers at the car but do not fire them at the helicopter. The helicopter you leave till the very end because once you kill the helicopter, it spawns two other choppers, no matter when you kill it. And so you don't want to get in a situation where you got two aggro choppers and all those guys throwing bombs. So what you do is you just use the rocket launcher and splash damage to take out the truck. And then once the truck is killed, then you kill the chopper and then you can just speed kill the second chopper. So here's one where you just run forward, run and throw grenades and uh, shoot stuff with your machine gun. Uh, it's just more consistent, at least for me, than trying to slow walk that section because it has all these uh, dudes spawning and throwing grenades and it get and sitting on top of the uh, camel is, you know, it's usually good because you have such firepower, but the scary thing about the camel is the camel is very susceptible to grenades because you're sitting right in grenade territory and your movement is not like super stellar or anything, so uh, that's why you want to try to avoid them throwing too many grenades. So now let's talk about the branching paths of Metal Slug 3. This is kind of the first significant branch. We, we went to the one where we went to the sub. That one's good. But this one's the first significant one. Because basically there's two different routing options for the state. Well, three, but two good ones. Uh, the first one is the one you'll see in speedruns. And so that's why uh, not always following speedruns is a good idea if you're doing a 1cc. And the reason for that is because the speedrunning route is obviously faster than this tunnel route. But it's way harder to get the weapons you need and to get through it without being like naked weapon-wise at the end. It's way harder to weapon route it. And so even though on paper it seems like, oh, that would be a good idea because you can uh, fly through the tedious section faster and you won't have to deal with it, um, it ends up not being a good idea for pure survival. For speedrunning it's good, but for pure survival it's not a good idea just because that weapon routing is so much harder. But let's talk about kind of an interesting meta with Metal Slug, uh, which is, so on paper, uh, you or a lot of people, when you see them doing 1ccs, they usually don't use the speedrunning routes or speedrunning routing too often because usually it's riskier. Instead, they go for a lot of like slow walking and you'll see a lot of clears of the game, which are like an hour long. That's also because of the slowdown, but uh, an hour long because they're also taking their, their time. The thing about it though is, I don't really route Metal Slug like that because even though um, some strats might be a little bit riskier, and we'll I'll show some. This fucking death pissed me off, by the way. This death pissed me off. And the reason for it is because one, that hitbox is like, I was jumping out of the way. So how is that hitbox hitting me? Two, I'll talk about the second reason later, but that that pissed me off. Um, this stage was my breaking point, by the way, and that's mostly because of the boss. I'd had run after run, but also I kept getting like randomly janked by this stage in different areas. So to get this far uh, and get randomly janked was not good. So let's talk about this little section here with the drill car, though. This is really important. So uh, there's different whatever giant caterpillars that come, even though they all look the same. Uh, there's different ones that come. And the, the first two, well, the, the first one and the last one have like extra health. And so the way you deal with them is you have to triple drill them. And so if you use the bomb, uh, it, instead of shooting a bomb, you, you shoot your drill out. And at first, you when you first do it, you're like, oh, this isn't effective. It didn't do anything. Well, it turns out if you do it three times on them, that kills them. And that's way better than risking getting out of the slug or trying to fight them with the gun and all that. So just speed kill them with the, the cannon drill. But you'll notice here. So... This is a little bit off route, but it, it's kind of okay. So the second, well, there's three reasons why that crab kill pissed me off. 
The second reason why is because um, I was supposed to carry that shotgun that I got all the way through to the boss. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because I'm in this little drill slug. And so the drill slug obviously won't use the shotgun. So um, you'll notice as I'm going through, I'm like avoiding weapon upgrades like or weapons like the heavy machine gun. And normally I'd avoid the laser as well. But since that stupid crab killed me, I now have to use the laser. Luckily, the laser is also really good in this boss fight. And I still debate whether the laser or the shotgun is better in terms of survival. On paper, the shotgun is better because it does more damage faster. The problem with the shotgun, though, is twofold. The first problem is simply that sometimes, well, often in a lot of patterns, the uh, boss here is too high up for the shotgun to reach unless you jump. And like I said before, jumping is risky in Metal Slug, especially on this stupid ass boss. So um, you can get caught in all kinds of ugly situations if you're just jumping and it, you know, it, it shoots a thing at you or whatever. So jumping, it's also not faster. You know, sitting on the ground and shooting it with a shotgun is faster than jumping and shooting, right? Because you have to jump and land and all that. And then the second problem with the shotgun that a lot of people don't talk about is so when you do, so the, I'm going to talk about that boss a little bit because that boss is the run killer. Now, I just powered through that boss like a champ because I got pretty good RNG and also because I practiced the crap out of it. But uh, so that boss is going to be the run killer for you because basically the way it works is if you get killed too early in the boss, it can be kind of over. If you get killed immediately, it's not so bad because you can uh, uh, still get weapon upgrades from the guys who drop and just hold out for a laser to show up but uh i mean it's still gonna be rough but if you get killed right in the middle it might just be over because it takes a lot of firepower to kill that sucker and you basically need a weapon upgrade to do it if you're doing it with the pistol you'll be there all day long and that's what i was talking about my initial impressions of the game is because i would die in a boss and have to kill it with a pistol and you it just go on and on and on and on because the the way the game's routed is it's kind of brutal but the way the game's routed is like basically if you're off route you're kind of screwed as far as not having a weapon so that's why i'm saying it's i'm still a little bit divided on how i feel about the game overall but once you get kind of used to the weapon routing everything it's a much less clunky one cc i'll tell you that much but the point I was getting at, the last thing about the shotgun, I like I said, I was still going for the shotgun in most of the runs. But funnily enough, when I did the shotguns, I always died once. But since the, the shotgun does so much damage, I was able to salvage it. But the only gnomus I got, as you saw there, was with the laser. And part of that was because of luck of the RNG. But the other reason for that is because I find dodging patterns with the laser so much easier than with the shotgun because the shotgun... It has that nice, juicy, massive hitbox, which is great, except it obscures some of the enemy shots, especially that really nasty uh, yellow laser pattern. That's the pattern of death, the yellow laser pattern. If you can avoid that, that's what you want to avoid, but there's nothing you can do about it if it shows up. And there's, I've tried all these sort of meta ways to dodge that pattern. Sorry, I'm talking about that boss a lot, but the boss has a lot going on. Um, I've tried all these sort of meta ways to dodge that pattern, but in the end, um, the best way is just to stand underneath it and just dodge reactively <laughs> the best you can. Um, so let me talk about this boss and there's one other thing I want to talk about. So this boss here, you need to pretty much have your ship intact to deal with it. Otherwise, this phase here is absolutely awful. Though, there have been runs where I've gotten to this phase with one extend, no extends left. And so if this guy hits me with a grenade, it would be over. And what I'd recommend there is if you don't have your ship, what you can do is if you just have your pistol, is you can just run along the bottom back and forth, back and forth, dodging his shots and wait for a spawn. Uh, I, we might see that happen here. You can get you can get a motorcycle guy to spawn and the motorcycle guy will spawn with a weapon. I think that's what I'm going to be doing here. Look, see, I'm not actually trying to damage him too much. I'm not taking too many risks. I'm saving my bombs because you want to use those for later. There it is. If you just run along the ground, you'll get a, a weapon spawn. And I recommend just help holding out for that. Got a rocket launcher. That's brilliant. And okay, now we're coming into the boss fight. So one thing I wanted to point out about this run is you'll notice, hey, the run is sort of like speeding up here and there. What's happening? Is that me in the edit? No, I'm actually doing that in real time because 
I'm not playing this on the arcade cab, I'm not playing this on console, and I'm not playing it on the Mister, though I was initially playing it on the Mister. I am playing it on Shmup Arch 8, which will be coming out soon. And I want to note Shmup Arch 8 because I have special configurations for the, all the Metal Slug games in Arch 8 that configures them the way that I play them. So if you don't want to play them that way, you can change the configs or whatever. But So the way I play Metal Slug games is I overclock them fully. So there's basically no slowdown. As you'll see here, me playing, you'll notice, wait, there's like no slowdown. That's because I overclock them completely because in most arcade games, you want to match the arcade clock because it's balanced around that. But in Metal Slug's case, I think the games run really poorly on the original hardware. Even ones that are kind of okay like Metal Slug 3, uh, it just, I don't know. I, th I think it kind of takes away from the experience. And then the second thing I do in Retro Ar or Shmup Arch, okay, so the CPU overclock, which is automatic, and then the second one is the run ahead or the preemptive frames now. Uh, it did reduces the input lag down to one and a half. You can't go down to one in Metal Slug because of, it runs at 30 FPS and it alternates. So if you try to go down to one, you'll overrun half the time. So instead you have to go down to two and then half the times you're getting one and the other half you're getting two frames. But it's not too bad of a deal because, or one and a half I mean, but it's not too bad of a deal because usually Metal Slug is like frames or something crazy like that. It's like a lot because the game run, runs at 30 FPS. So it, it, it's a little laggy at 30 FPS, but then you double that and it's like, and this is on the hardware, the original hardware. I'm not talking about an emulator on Switch or anything. I'm saying on the original hardware on the Mr. version, which is equivalent to the original hardware from what I understand, it's like frames. It still feels better than the console ports, but uh, yeah, it's still a lot. So Shmup Arch running at two frames, which is I think the lowest physically possible to get this game. Because like I said, the 30 FPS thing causes issues if you try to go down to one. But the game running at two frames feels like a whole other game. And it makes certain things feel more reasonable. <laughs> like for example, that yellow uh, laser pattern. That thing is like impossible to dodge on OG hardware because it's just you know, the input lag is cutting down your action time so much. It's still incredibly hard to dodge at high speeds, even on Shmup Arch, but it, it's a little bit more possible. And that's kind of like the game overall, like these Shmup sections here, like they just, everything feels just a little bit better and a little bit more fun. So I definitely recommend if you're playing uh, Metal Slug 3, at least by my taste, play it on Shmup Arch. It's the only way to do it. It's, it's still better than MAME too, because MAME, doesn't have the preemptive frames and they're very important for Metal Slug, more, much more so than some shmups. You know, some shmups run low latency, even in MAME, not Metal Slug. <laughs> so uh, I, I just I just really feel like this is the way to play. Or the mist, the second best way to play is the Mister. If you want like the, the best original hardware experience played on the Mister. Um, I've been yammering on, but this shmup section is a little bit uh, fluffy anyway. I think this this is the section of the game where this first bit here I think is good and I think okay you guys can keep that in here this bit here that we're, we're still doing where you're using the shotguns and you're fighting the little aliens and what's fun is that you're fighting the act this is a little mini boss rush because this is the final boss of Metal Slug 2 uh, and um, the the these guys are absolute uh, hellions nightmares in Metal Slug 2 they get oh my god um, I don't know if the streams still exist, but I about threw my arcade stick because in Metal Slug 2, the final boss is absolutely troll because of the RNG with these stupid little guys that pop out, the little UFO guys. The RNG because uh, right before the boss fight, these little UFO, uh, UFO guys drop weapons like they are now. But uh, <laughs> the RNG can be so troll because basically if you don't have full weapon upgrades of like lasers or rockets or something, that final boss is hell on earth like it's incredibly difficult without them but it's down to rng sometimes they won't drop any weapon all they'll drop like a pig it's like thanks i got three pigs and i had uh, two runs in a row where that happened two runs in a row where i made all the way through the game to the final boss and got no weapon rng twice uh so it, that all being said I, it feels incredibly satisfying to just blow through him with the machine with the spaceship this time around get your revenge Way, way easier, obviously, because it's just kind of a little fun boss rush, but 
This section here, I think, should have been cut. This bit here, where you've got kind of like the salamanders type background. This, the sec, the actual level design isn't so bad or anything. Like, it's not janky. Now, the hitbox on your ship is massive. But this is actually a fun little lesson that even Metal Slug figured out in terms... Well, Metal Slug should have made the hit... Well, the, I, the hitbox is fine because it's balanced around it. It's not that intense. But um, this is a little lesson for everyone because, look, this is a ver vertizontal or whatever. Hor vertical. You know, it's horizontal aspect ratio, but we're scrolling vertically. So vertizontal, right? Well, look what Metal Slug does to compensate for this. And it feels nicer. Like, look how big the sprites are. Not only your enemy, not only your ship, which is huge, but like the enemies, uh, the bullets, everything's freaking massive. And that's a bit of advice I always give to developers working on like indie shmups and stuff is if you're going vertizontal, scale stuff up, make it bigger. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. Um... Also, uh, another thing they did that was really clever is in vertizontals, the horizontal movement is always a problem because there's more of it than there should be, at least compared to verti normal verticals. And so uh, there's different ways to deal with that. Metal Slug deals with it both ways. The first way is to have a massively wide attack, which you do when you get the heavy machine guns or the lasers, like your side uh, wings are huge. And then the second thing it does is it gives you kind of like an aimable weapon here as you can see so now they deal with it both ways it's not poorly designed it just feels like when you're grinding out one cc's this section isn't scary it feels kind of like a bonus section i guess that's the best way to say it, it feels it feels like a bonus section that goes on too long the first screen went on long enough i think that was enough this screen is just kind of uh, especially because a little it is a little bit poorly designed in that there's a section i may have missed it or it may be coming up i think i missed it what, talking about it which is there's a section where you just shoot these giant bullet sponge meteors and then you just speed kill them and then uh the game is sort of balanced around how that's timed and so what happens if you just speed kill them really fast you just hang out with a bunch of empty screen for like 20 seconds and metal or like 15 seconds or something in metal slug that's really unusual you know metal slug is a very tightly knit highly paced game so that little section there i think was i i think it was just overstretching the whole shmup thing a little too much so here we go into uh the actual final stage so technically the game says final stage when you enter stage five but we all know this is actually stage six um but you do actually carry your bomb uh, upgrades and everything throughout the stage. That's why I said don't use your bombs on that uh, mini ship earlier. Uh, that's why, because they actually carry it into what is essentially stage six. So it is still stage five because you carry resources over and all that and whatever, but I just consider it a sixth stage because it clearly is in terms of difficulty and length. But um, the key here is you don't want to go too crazy with that flamethrower on the squid guys because you want to save the flamethrower for these bullet sponge mothers because basically if you come into them with just a pistol uh they're going to double up on you and you're going to get trapped and killed so you need to uh, again it's all about weapon routing you need to weapon route that flamethrower to have like eight shots or so left so you can just speed kill them uh and the, let's talk a little bit about the weapons because that's going to come into play a lot when we go into the final boss in these final sections here heavy machine gun very good for crowd control, very good versatile weapon, kind of crappy for boss fights because it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's very versatile, it's good for crowd control, it's good for the stages, but usually not good for bosses. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh, rocket launcher, good for boss fights, but not super good because it doesn't do a ton of damage and there's not a whole lot of bullets with the rocket launcher, though you rarely use that on bosses anyway, other than, you know, if you get random drops from the boss. But, uh, the, the winners, there's three main winners when it comes to boss fight and boss routing. Laser gun, which we see here. Rocket launcher. No, sorry, not rocket launcher. I just wanted to say rocket launcher. Um, Flamethrower uh, and shotgun. So those three are the best three, in my opinion, for boss fight. L laser low key might be the best overall for boss fights, just overall, because it just does so much damage. And it's a little bit more versatile than the shotgun because shotgun you got to get close laser it's full screen it's very easy to aim it's very easy to hit things with it usually has a 
crap load of ammo. So, uh, shotguns, you technically the best in a lot of cases because it does so much damage. Like the stage three boss, this, there's no doubt the shotgun's the way to go. But like I said, with certain boss fights, sometimes I feel like the laser is a little bit more versatile, a bit more reliable than the shotgun. But shotgun's very good. On the final boss, however, the winner is the flamethrower because the flamethrower on certain enemies does an absolute insane amount of damage. Not on all enemies, though. Uh, it, you know, there's a little bit of, like, enemy-type, weapon-type stuff going on here. Because, like, uh, the next mini-boss that I fight is, like, this glass thing. And the flamethrower kind of sucks on that glass thing. It doesn't really do much. Uh, whereas the shotgun, like, blows the crap out of it. So if you have proper weapon routing, I should have the shotgun. But I use a different strat we'll talk about. This bit here is brutal as hell. This is one of the harder bits of the game. Uh, as far as not getting janked out. Because you, it changes run to run. So you never quite know exactly what's going to happen. The little spider guys. Unless my, you know, unless there's like some god tier routing RNG factor that I'm not aware of. But mostly it changes run to run somewhat. And so when exactly you jump always depends. And the way it works is you kind of run forward on those stairs. And they follow you. And then as they turn gold and are about to explode you have to jump. But it's very tight timing. If you do it too early... Uh, you're gonna die. If you do too late, you're gonna die. This section here is terrifying <laughs> because you're deep into the game and the way that goes is you have to run back and forth, back and forth against those high-speed bullets while also looking up. So if you if you accidentally hold just up, you're dead. And then the also scary thing about it too is you can kind of go wider, but you don't want to go wider because if you go wider, then you'll accidentally spawn the other weapons. And you want to spawn the weapons later for that second phase there. So uh, so what you end up having to do is just go back and forth, back and forth in this tight little perimeter. <laughs> um, and if you mess up the input, you die. But uh, you can I pr that's, you just got to save state practice that timing. It's not hard. It's just hard to get set up exactly. Because the cues for it aren't very... They're not super clear. And um, there's a bit of kind of kind of like an intuition when you initially set it up. Uh, this mother here, you want to just unload on his ass with the cannon. Now, what's fun about the metal slug is the abusable iframes. And I feel like what happened with the evolution of the metal slug throughout the series is in Metal Slug 1, I don't think the dev team was as aware of how abusable those iframes are. Or if they were, they're kind of like, ah, eh, players won't figure that crap out. So the slug in Metal Slug 1 is straight up OP because the game isn't really prepared for how much iframe spamming you can do with the slug. But by the time they get to Slug 3, the developers are well aware of how good in vulnerability uh, scamming on the slug is. And so the game actually like low-key makes you do it a bunch. <laughs> so that, that can be kind of jarring. That's why I always say when it comes to Metal Slug, Metal Slug is one of those series, ironically, if you're new to it, where you kind of want to play it in order. You kind of want to play one and then two and then three because they actually do build on each other in terms of like challenge and what the games are expecting you to do. And Metal Slug 1's a great introductory. And you may say, oh, two, don't you mean X? Because two sucks because of all the bad slowdown. That's true, except if you played in a shmup arch because it's ultra overclocked and shmup arch so the uh the slowdown's gone this is the glass thing i was talking about so normally on bosses the flamethrower like melts them but this mother i guess because it's made out of glass or whatever it's made out of flamethrower does like nothing on it so if you route it properly you come in with the shotgun you can just speed kill with the shotgun but this is my own tm my own uh strategy that i came up with which is you run back and forth run back and forth just back and forth back and forth back and forth like this I'm not even attacking it, you know, it's like, wait, aren't you supposed to be attacking it? N no, not yet. What we're doing is we're building up our heavy machine gun ammo count. And then you come into this back corner and you fire. And you're like, oh, isn't this a cute safe spot? And like 80% of the time it is. But once the guys get up onto the um, hill, there's a specific spot where they can hit you with a flamethrower unless you jump. But you don't want to just be jumping. So what you do, you see there, um, <clears throat> what you do is you sit there and crouch and you're not watching what you're shooting. You're just watching that spot on the hill 
and you're just waiting for someone to fire. And then if they fire the flamethrower, you jump. This bit here, hours and hours of save state practice. It looks simple because I have it routed perfectly. Well, well, I wouldn't say perfectly. I have it routed well. But dear God, if you don't have this section routed, you're in for brutality. Another reason why when you first play the game, it feels insane. <laughs> but the way it works is speed kill, speed kill, speed kill. But this guy drops uh, bombs and you want them. But the key, the key off is he doesn't drop them right away. And you're kind of racing against time. You never see it happen because I'm doing suppressive fire. But if these zombie guys on the left get, you'll see it happen here. Watch. They'll fire that giant. That'll kill you. And, and like, there comes a point where if they get too close, you're just screwed. Because they tank a lot of hits. Uh, and they kind of double up on you. So you have to suppress the fire. It's kind of like a little speedrun section. Or it, there's two ways to play it. The speedrun style where you just run and route it out. And then the uh, tanky uh, slow walk style where you kill them. And I do both. <laughs> so um, right now I'm kind of doing it the speedrun style. This bit here is really um, kind of scary. Because the way it works is, ironically, you don't want them to be too far away from you. Because if they hit you with a shotgun, it's kind of over. <laughs> it's just kind of run, run finished <laughs> in terms of routing. Um, you might be able to do it with one gun arm. But if they blow off both gun arms, oh, oh my, you are in for hell. And so that's why routing this is very important. It's kind of clutch moment. But on the other hand, um, as long as you're paying attention, it's not so bad. The, the way it works is do not take these guys for granted. Even though it feels really tempting to just kind of ignore them a little bit and just focus on the door. If they get a shot off and hit you, it's over. But okay, so now I'm doing a little bit of tank strat here. So... Which is, it, there's eight of these guys that spawn. And so if you want, there is a tedious way to do this section where you just, every time, come here and uh, kill them as they all spawn. Over and over and over again, screen to screen to screen. Fun funnily enough, you'll start to kind of run out of timer doing that. But it's also like, that strat is just so boring that even though it might be a bit more consistent than what I do. Uh, key here, jumping over that drop shot. Dropping, jumping over that drop shot is absolutely vital. So let me give you the route. You get in the mech. You jump over the first uh, R2-D2 because you don't actually have to fight him. The other ones you all do have to fight though. And so you speed kill them with the you know rocket bomb it shoots and then the flamethrower attachment. Um, they get a shot off on you and they damage you, but that's fine. And then at the door, you get to the door, you try and flamethrower it a bit. And then once you run out of flamethrower with the... Uh, mech you just self-destruct the mech and blow the door hatches and then unfortunately if there's anything left over just uh, uh, hit it with a flamethrower and if you speed kill it in time you don't get killed so here we go the final boss i have practiced this final boss no kidding seven hours <laughs> like if all pure save stating seven hours let me give you the key um it, it this is like a this is one of the best bosses so far in metal slug ever that I've ever played. I love this boss. The way I'm playing it, I'm playing it a very, very kind of a safe, the safest way possible. This is the safest way, but if you want to get swag with it, uh, you can do some really fun stuff where you go sit in the middle of the brain and then you knife cancel the brain by going back and forth, back and forth. Watch some speed runs. It's, it's actually incredible, but let me give you my strat. So the way it works is you come in, uh, you notice that seam I'm standing on? That is a very specific seam. The seam on his head, see where my foot is? You need to place your foot exactly on that seam, exactly how I do it every time. Because that safe spot, it's a safe spot from the wave blast. And that's key. So you'll, you'll notice there, that was the most terrifying bit of the run ever. Because uh, I accidentally, I was so, I was so nervous. Because, you know, I finally made it to the boss. Um, this could go wrong very quickly if I'm not careful. If things go wrong, I mean, and run over. So it's very possible I could still lose. Not a slam dunk at all. Resources basically mean nothing in terms of like lives. I almost fell off. Oh my god. Oh man, this was this was a little bit rough. I salvaged it, but it's a little bit rough because I was so nervous. <laughs> I'm like missing my jump inputs and just falling off the side. I, but I accidentally fast forwarded. My fast forward button is way on the other side of my stick. But I was so nervous that I was like pressing the stick, my body against the stick, and my chest hit the, 
hit the goddamn fast forward button. I was like, whoa, what the f Oh God. I about pissed myself, but it was luckily it happened at a very a pretty safe time, so it only and it was just for a second or two, but that could have been the end of the run. I accidentally fast forward myself to death. Luckily I do not do toggle, I do hold. Imagine if I did toggle, it would be over, but I learned that long ago you do hold instead of toggle. But anyway, um So you stand on the seam and you just so once you're standing on the seam, don't look at the wave, because the wave no longer matters. You look at his mouth and when he fires the uh green orbs and what you do is you jump out um, and you jump into the tank and then the tank you use the invulnerability frames of the tank to uh, you know absorb or shield you against the green orbs and uh, there's like different variety of timings to it based off of how fast they're coming out of his mouth how many are coming out of your mouth and stuff like that and then also if you're getting real swag with it which I did at the end there is you land you get the iframes and you line it up so that you land, get the iframes, and then fire the, the shell out of the cannon. And the shell hits, and the shell will hit the red orb, and the red orb is an item. I, I can't remember what run it was. I think it was a run before this, which was a 2cc, um, where, where I didn't die in the boss, so I died, I died before the boss, but played it through. There was a 2cc where I got like five of those in a row, and every single time the item was like a pig or like a coin. I didn't get an actual item. This um, this run, luckily, I got actually really good RNG. So I, I landed. I got like the, the gr super grenade, which does a good amount of damage. Then I did it again. And I think I got like the, the rocket launcher or something. And then I got the shotgun at the end. I remember when I saw that shotgun spawn. It was like, ah, oh, it's going to be okay. Unless I royally screw up. Because um, I knew once I got the shotgun, it'd be just a few shots and it'd be dead. Because the shotgun does so much damage and it was pretty late. But anyway, mm, that boss fight, it's all about standing on that safe spot and then abusing the iframes like I do. But it's going to take practice. I mean, the way I did it there, it looked like, oh, that's, you know, baby's first uh, strat. But it's actually, there's a lot of little mitigating factors going on there that you have to pay attention to. Like how long th th stuff is coming out of the mouth. Uh, exactly how long the iframes are. Then you have to get pretty good at launching out of the slug and landing on the safe spot. That'd be my other tip strategy, which is practice coming, because what can happen is you, you land in there, there's a bunch of green orbs coming and your iframes are about out. So you have to eject to get more iframes and to avoid them. So you eject and then you land and then the wave hits you and kills you. And th that can be a really unfortunate lineup. But if you learn, but if you learn how to eject and just land on the safe spot, like a, like Super Mario Bros out of a pipe, just pew, land right on that uh, safe spot, um, it, it, it's really, really consistent strat then. And um, it can get a little bit taxing because basically you come in, you get the flamethrowers, you have the bombs. But then once you do all the flamethrowers and bombs, there's kind of a while there where you're just shooting it in the face with a pistol. Don't get impatient though. Don't get greedy. Just keep to the strategy, which is you watch the mouth and you got to jump into the tank before the stuff comes out of the mouth. And the speeds vary. And so what can happen is we, you, don't, you can't do just a rhythm. You can't just go, oh, every, you know, every rhythm I do it like this. Because sometimes the, the grenades will come out of the mouth. The green orbs will come out of the mouth. And they'll be fast as hell. And so if you're going on the rhythm, they'll actually beat you to the tank and wall you off and kill you. So you, you can't just take it for granted. Oh, okay, it's going to come out this speed. Sometimes they come super fast. Conversely, they sometimes can come out slower than expected. So what can happen then, it, and then there can be a lot of them, and it kind of takes forever them, for them to come out, and there's a lot. So what can happen is you can get preemptive. You jump in the tank. You land in the tank. You think, oh, I'm so clever. And then they just, the, your iframes are up, and there's like a wall of them coming. So then you got to jump out of the tank. You jump out of the tank. You land, and then the wall keeps coming and just hits you. So um, there's always kind of a timing element. Uh, worst you know, worst case scenario, you may have to tank one, but ironically, like the tank's health is almost more important than your extends. Like, because in the end phase, so for example, in the end phase, let's say you've got two, you've got one extra extend like I had there, and you have two tank hits. It's actually better to die than it is to lose the tank. Because once you lose the tank, then you have to dodge all of these patterns purely on foot, and that is so difficult. Whereas if you die and the tank still lives you could potentially d survive more patterns so it's a very interesting dynamic and one of the very very few times in metal slug where it's like the tank health is more important than your health 
you know, up until you have no health and up until you have no extends, then of course your extends matter more, but um, it, it is interesting. But, but uh, yeah, so Metal Slug 3, what a fun 1cc. So much to talk about, so much to cover. I recommend you watch back. Got to, so nice, you got to watch it twice, not only for my commentary, but also to see a lot of the nitty gritty of what I'm doing with the routing. Because unfortunately, I cannot speak fast enough to cover every single thing. And I was tempted to like do a video where I sit and like pause, but then the video would be like an hour and a half long. And I was like, oh, people aren't going to tune in for that. So I, we had to just kind of speed talk. So if you want to get real nitty gritty, uh, specific information, besides what I'm saying, also go back and watch exactly how I'm doing things, exactly how I do the sections, because every little detail matters in Metal Slug. Every little detail matters. You don't think it does? It does. Like where you stand on this screen at this time, it, at the beginning of stage two, that matters because maybe in that place, in that placement, oh, that unlocks a weapon that pick up, but then you need to conserve shots a certain way and you need to carry the weapon throughout the stage. So the entire run matters. That's what's really cool about Metal Slug and frustrating at the same time. What's really cool about the series is like everything piles on each other. So like playing really well in the beginning is actually really important for playing well at the end in terms of lives and resources. The game gives you no extends because SNK are greedy bastards and they want your money. So that's also pretty interesting as well. But thanks so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, tell all your friends. Pretty soon, I'm thinking I'm going to do a Metal Slug tier list. I think I'm going to do that next before I do Metal Slug 4. I'll play, Metal, I'll play the rest of the games in the series, but I probably won't 1cc them in time for that because uh, it takes this took me like 30 hours of practice a week of practice off stream a lot of it on the switch actually <laughs> um but also on the computer as well when i had to get to the real run points but i could do a lot of routing on the switch which was nice uh but you know it's no easy clear it but it is really fun and rewarding and my hands were shaking and i popped off it, it was an awesome time uh can't recommend the game enough i can't recommend the series enough it's better than super mario bros adios everyone so thank you to the $5 patrons, 100 100, accepting Panda, Admiral Coconut, Arnold, Alexander Pfeiffer, Alexander Talbot, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Arcade Hell, Aaron Solis, Arrow Viper, Bo, Ben, Beetle Dames, Borgie 22, Brian Shiver, Chase Palumbo, Chattel Maltese, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Clara Cliff, Climby Coyote, Coast, Color Boy, Cook Sand 666, Cook Some Soup, Cory Mark, Des Audio, Danchi, Darren Griffin, Dave Hansen, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, Fantaside, FCK, Francisco, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, How Su, Jake Ryan, J Lab, JB RPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Praise the Boys, K Horse, Malaise, Matt O'Leary, Maz, Megadeth859, Minung, Mechelin, Michael McCord, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, Neon Dagger Games, Oakland Googles, Philip Mason, Rattle Cat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw STG, Shmup Junkie, Sir Pong, Steve Fiction, Street Magic, Super Funk, Tamzarian, Takero Mucho, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, 2YU, Twilight EX, Utakoi Roots, Vic Viper, Wabby Legs, X20 Specs, Bog Hog, and Utskaya. Thanks for watching.